Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me on this presentation. I'm going to be speaking about how to uh, monitor your microservices using ELK, which is nothing but elastic log stash Kibana and structured logging. Uh, so small introduction about myself. Uh, I am Anand Sundaraman. I am a tech lead at HBO, which is now a part of uh, Warner Media. And uh, the presentation is going to be structured like this. Um, I'm going to start off with what is the problem that we are trying to solve? Uh, a brief one slider about ELK architecture, uh, what is structured logging, uh, and then you know how we can build dashboards using Kibana, how we can use watchers for alerting, and then you know some advanced uh, scripting in watchers using and uh, and using that for anomaly detection. So with that being said, uh, I'm just going to go over what our goal was. So I am a technical leader in one of the teams called the media supply chain team. And our goal is to ensure reliable delivery of content and metadata. So in order to do that, we need to uh, monitor workflows and transactions that span across multiple microservices. And our goal was, you know, how do we track anomalies in the system and how, do, how can we be proactively, be, uh, how can we be proactively be alerted about these anomalies? And uh, the challenges that we face are that, you know, we have a huge ecosystem of uh, microsystems. Uh, many of them are primarily on Java Spring Boot. Many of them are on Node.js Express. And then, uh, of course, we have start, started adopting AWS Lambdas. And the other thing is that we have to support multiple workflows when we are trying to, uh, you know, to deliver content and metadata. So with these uh, challenges presented to us, you know, we had, um, you know, we were thinking of a few options on how do we uh, monitor our uh, microservices. So we all we all obviously have App Dynamics, uh, to which you know we uh, which is an APM agent. Uh, we were thinking about using that. Uh, we we even thought about building a custom application, you know, that could listen to all the events. So we are primarily an event driven uh, system. So we thought maybe we should listen to uh, all the events and try to do a build a monitoring system. And we obviously had ELK and we had had a good experience using uh, ELK and the watchers uh, in ELK. And so let's say, uh, and so we said, you know, let's see uh, what ELK has to offer and then let's figure out where to go from there. So uh, for people who are not familiar with ELK, I just want to give a brief one slider on what ELK stands for. So the whole purpose is uh, we want our application logs across uh, different microservices to be aggregated at one place and for us to be able to easily query it. So there are many log aggregation um, you know, products out there. ELK is one of them. You have Splunk, you have Sumo Logic, Amazon CloudWatch. Uh, so we, uh, we already had started using ELK. And so I'm just going to give a brief one slider on that. So right to the left, you have the application log. And then uh, ELK has this component called Beats that periodically reads off these application logs and ships it to Logstash. Logstash does the work of parsing the data and then storing it onto a data store, which is Elasticsearch. And Kibana is just a UI or uh, something that fronts Elasticsearch that enables us to easily query logs across applications. So that is just a brief introduction on what ELK does. So now moving on to what is structured logging. So structured logging mainly means to log application data in a format that can be easily parsed or that can be easily queried by any log aggregation system. So on the left, you have an example of an unstructured log from a Java application that says, okay, the Spring Boot application started on port 8080. 
And we all have uh, got, gotten used to seeing that we as developers know how to easily read it visually and you know understand that information. But then I, I remember days where you know we used to ship logs like uh, in, the, in the unstructured format, uh, even to Sumo logic. And I had to uh, write specific regular expressions to parse out uh, you know, things in the message so that uh, I can easily query on things. And then I got introduced to structured logs, which is there on the right. So this, this structured log is nothing but a JSON log. And if you look at it carefully, it is it has just broken down the unstructured log on the left into like a JSON log. And you know you can see you have the timestamp, you have the message, you have the name of the log or the thread and all other attributes in that. So it is easy for us to query on that. So how do we achieve structured logging? Uh, Java has a library called logstash logback encoder uh, that helps you to you know, log your uh, application logs in a structured format as a JSON. And you can configure it using logback uh, configuration files. Similarly for Node.js, we use a library called Winston and Winston also can be configured so that one can log application data in a JSON format. So I'll just uh, try to quickly show an example of how we have a configured spring uh, logback. So right on the top, you would see we are uh, logging the data to console, uh, application logs to console, just like you know any application developer would like to see it. But at the same time, we are also logging the application logs to a log file. And you know this is the configuration we uh, you know carry out to uh, log it in a structured format. I can also show you an example of my application. So on my local, you can see uh, the application is logging it in the normal readable format. But if you look at the log, the log that actually is being logged to the file is in a JSON format. So what are the advantages we get out of structured logs? Structured logs uh, make the logs readable and they also you know, help introduce custom fields. Like we are generally used to seeing logs, uh, you know, log the message, the log level, error, things like that. But you can also log custom fields if you wanted to track certain metrics. And an example of that would be here. I, am, uh, I have a microservice called the orders microservice running on my local machine. And I have Kibana open here, which is reading the logs. And you can see that I can, uh, the messages are uh, clearly formatted and you can click on the JSON format of the message and you can see uh, the logs that can be easily read and you can see the various fields. And uh, I would like to bring your attention to this particular area where I'm actually introducing custom fields in the log. So for example, here I am logging some information about an order. It has got an order name, order amount, order ID. And this uh, particular way of introducing custom fields is also uh, can be done using the logstash logback encoder for Java. And it can also be done using Winston JS for Node.js. So I'm just going to my orders controller in my microservice and I'm just sort of showing you the line of code that actually logs the data in a structured format. So here I have a REST API that is accepting orders and here uh, this is an order object that is uh, being converted into a map and that is being passed to this function called KV. KV is uh, the log stash log back abbreviation for key value. And that helps us uh, you know, introduce custom logs and it just prints out maps and nested maps. And we use that day in and day out in our applications. The other advantage of uh, using structured logs is now the stack trace is readable 
and that is what actually sort of got us uh, going many a times when we look at uh, an application where an exception is thrown it was very difficult to you know see okay how's the stack trace thrown and you know and I try to parse that uh, stack trace and understand where exactly the problem is but because of uh, this change uh, i mean you can actually configure logback such that stack trace is a separate field and a demonstration of that would look like here I know I had just introduced a, um, an exception. So it says unable to parse a string and I can select, you know, okay, I want to see the stack trace and I decide not to see the message and just see the stack trace and you can actually see, okay, there was an exception when, you know, I was trying to pass the string as an integer. So that is, uh, you know, another big takeaway using structured logs. Now I would like to take an example of an e-commerce application to demonstrate, you know, how you can uh, track met monitor metrics or track transactions across microservices end to end. So this is a very uh, simplistic e-commerce service where you have an orders microservice, a fulfillment microservice and a shipping microservice. The orders microservice has a rest endpoint that accepts orders and then it is sending it across to the fulfillment microservice, which in turn sends it to the shipping microservice, which ships the order. So, so like I have here, I'm going to go back and select message. So here, uh, you know, just for the sake of uh, time, I have already created 10 orders and every time I create an order, I say, okay, create log, create new order. And I can also, you know, since I have added a uh, custom fields, I can also say add order ID, order name and order amount. And I can view all of these uh, on my logs. Similarly, I can do the same on the uh, shipping uh, microservice. So I've similarly introduced a cu custom log on the shipping microservice. And you can see an order has been shipped. And uh, I had a custom field introduced called shipping, which also has the order ID. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And so you can basically see how easy it is to you know, track metrics or pass data out of your logs and you know, see what it does. Now, having uh, seen a demo of you know how it has been useful, now again using this example, let us think about you know, what would be important metrics to monitor in you know, such a micro in a, such a e-commerce system. So you would be interested probably in you know what is the uh, amount of revenue that was generated from the orders, number of orders that were shipped, uh, number of orders that were processed. I mean. These could just be basic metrics uh, one could be interested in. So to uh, monitor all of these, uh, we can build dashboards and visualizations. So I have a dashboard pre-built that I would like to show here. And so this actually shows us, okay, we had 10 orders that were created and then there were 10 orders that got shipped and the total revenue of all those 10 orders was 145. And how do we do that? So I'll just go ahead and demonstrate how we built that visualization. So I could say, so this was the total revenue visualization that I built. The main thing here is I am querying, so I'm going to go into the search. I am querying uh, the orders service microservices for all the newly created orders. And that looks like, I'll go back to the last one hour. So basically I'm looking at search for all the messages that have created new order. So that is a search I'm uh, doing here. And then uh, because I have created a custom field called order amount, which uh, ELK is able to parse, I'm saying, okay, please perform a sum on that particular field and name it total revenue. 
So this way, you know, you can build custom metrics that you would ideally like to monitor. So that was an example of the dashboard. So I had just uh, taken a screenshot of this uh, dashboard and now moving on to alerts. So like uh, just a dashboard being there, it's uh, good to look at the dashboard and you know understand how your system is behaving. The way uh, we typically use our dashboards is, let's say we have a release and after the release, we go to the dashboards uh, at least for, uh, for one or two days after the release, just to check you know, if things are uh, flowing through fine, our transactions are getting completed. But then uh, you also need uh, a way to get alerted if there are any failures or you know, uh, if there is something new that is going into production and you, know, you want to just uh, sort of uh, handhold it or see how things go in a production. Uh, when something something new is taking effect, you would like to get notified about it. So Kibana uh, offers this thing called watchers, where you can configure uh, these watchers to look at your index for certain uh, messages, and then you know be alerted based on these. Uh, you can configure them to send you Slack alerts. You can also configure them to send you email alerts. So let's look at an uh, example. So I have this watcher configured and basically what I'm telling here in this watcher is, hey, look at my index example orders. An index means uh, basically a store which is storing all the logs for a particular application. So here in this case, example hyphen orders stores all the application logs for example orders. And I'm querying for, has a new order been created for the last one hour? I say create a new order for the last one hour. And if yes, then this is a condition that says, okay, if there were new orders created in the last one hour, then notify me via Slack. So I'm just going to go ahead and simulate this. And actually it says there were no orders created in the last one hour. So I'm just going to go ahead and say last three hours. And then I'm going to say execute. And so it says, okay, yes, it's firing. I'm going to go to Slack and it says, okay, you had an order ID created with order ID eight and the order name was order eight. Okay, so now all of this is good. Now, how do I do anomaly detection? So the problem that we wanted to solve was we have an input and we have an output. You think about this e-commerce system where somebody placed an order and uh, you got the order, but it actually did not get shipped. So in a typical world, a uh, customer would come and you know let the sub, uh, customer service know, hey, I placed an order, but it did not get uh, shipped. And so that is when it's, it, then it becomes, then we become reactive. But how can we proactively catch this even before, you know, it goes all the way down to the customer. So to do that, we need to, we needed to correlate logs across indices. So that is where we have this thing called, we have all our orders, microservice logs being stored at example orders shipping microservices being stored at uh, example shipping, but both orders and shipping microservices uh, logs are stored at a global index called example. And again, I need to go back and say, let's do it for at last was. So we have this data. Now let's look at an example where I just have a feature toggle where I'm going to say, you know, stop accepting any shipping and I'm just going to create a new order, order ID 1000 with order number 1000 and a new order gets created. I go back to my dashboard and I'm going to refresh it. It takes a while, okay. 
So now if you look at this dashboard, it says, okay, I have 11 orders created, but only 10 of them got shipped. So I'm wondering where is my missing order and how do I get alerted about it? So that's where you can use, uh, again, again, you can use watchers. And I would like to show you an example of one such watcher. I'm calling it the order workflow watcher. And basically here, what I'm doing is I'm making use of the global index example star where I'm able to query uh, messages across both the microservices. So I'm looking at, I'm gonna change the parameter here and I'm saying, okay, query for all the orders, uh, new orders that were created in the last two hours, two hours, and then query for all the orders that were shipped in the last two hours. And then I have a script that runs to do the comparison and you know alert me of the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate that. And so it has alerted me about that. And then you can see, it says, okay, an order ID 1000 was created at so-and-so time, but there was no, there has been no shipment. And the way uh, to do that would be is, so this is what my script looked like. I should actually go into this. So basically my script, what it does is, it goes through the search results that Kibana uh, returns and creates a map where the map is trying to store the order ID, the time the order was placed. So I have the order creation time and then the time a shipment was done. So I store the shipping time. And uh, finally, what it does is it uh, iterates through the map and sees if there are order IDs which had order time created, but that do not have any shipment, then you know it aggregates that to a string message and alerts it to Slack. That was the demo on anomaly detection. So again, uh, this is something we use uh, daily and we have multiple workflows in our system that we need to track and there were many interesting things we were able to discover. Like since we are keeping uh, monitoring systems and workflows under, you know, under such high observability, we were able to find out uh, things or we were able to identify business actions that users were taking that we were not aware of. We were able to discover new use cases that we were not aware of based on these uh, uh, transactional alerts. So all of this um, code is actually hosted on GitHub, uh, including running the whole ELK stack using our Docker. Uh, I hope this presentation was helpful to you and uh, I am open to any questions and answers.